So in the last video, we talked about the PN junction band diagram. And we said that the PN junction has a certain built-in potential VBI, and that's the potential that electrons need to overcome to get from the N side to the P side, or that holes have to overcome to get from the P side to the N side. And so we said that this built-in potential is caused by this electric field. And we said that if we've got a, so if we've got a P side and an N side to our semiconductor, then we've got a bunch of negatively charged ions on the P side and a bunch of positively charged ions on the N side. And we said we wanted to find the strength of the electric field as well as the depletion width, how wide this depletion region is. Um, and to do that, we're gonna make a couple assumptions. First, we're gonna assume that the junction is abrupt. And that just means that uh, we transition from one side to the other instantly. So at this point, uh, the doping concentration is like, I don't know, 10 to the 17 per centimeter cubed. And at this point, the acceptor concentration is like 10 to the 17 per centimeter cubed. And there's no, uh, there's no transition between the two. You just immediately go from one concentration to the other concentration. And we also assume that the depletion width itself is abrupt so that uh, there's this certain region, uh, there's a certain distance, we'll say Xn, that contains positive ions. And outside that region, there's no net charge. Uh, similarly, there's a region on the P side uh, with length Xp. Uh, outside which there are no negative ions. So we just, or there are negative ions, but no net negative ions. So we're assuming the depletion region is abrupt as well. So, and we, uh, we assume this implicitly in our previous discussion on the band diagrams of PN junctions. So we know, we know VBI, we can calculate it, right? VBI, uh, we said in the last video, is just KT over Q which is sometimes written as ut or phi t, which is the thermal voltage, times the natural log of the acceptor concentration on the P side times the donor concentration on the N side divided by the intrinsic carrier concentration squared. So that's VBI. We know, we know what that is. We can calculate it. And we want to relate this to the electric field and to the charge within this region. So uh, we know that we can, we can sketch out the charge as a function of distance. So let's say this is our graph uh, X. We know that on this side, so once we get to this point uh, where the depletion region starts, we've got some net negative charge. So we've got a certain charge minus Q. So this is uh, Q as a function of X or the charge density as a function of X. So we've got some negative charge here, Q. And this charge, I'm going to represent it with blue because that's what negative charge is to me. Uh, and then this is followed by a net positive charge. And outside these two regions, there's no net charge. Well, we know from Gauss's law uh, that the divergence of the electric field is just equal to rho over epsilon. And if you haven't memorized this by now, you should get it uh, tattooed on your arm. In one dimension, that just looks like dE dx is equal to rho over epsilon. And so if we're interested in the electric field, uh, we can say dE is just rho over epsilon dx. And I apologize to any of the mathematicians watching this video. Now to find the electric field, uh, we know that all we need to do is integrate dE and appropriately set our boundaries. So we need to just integrate rho over epsilon, or rho is the charge density, times dx, from, say, 0 to x. Now, what this means is we want to find the integral of the charge, or we want to find the area uh, under this curve and the area above this curve, and then plot that. So if we do that, uh, let's just graphically integrate it. So up until we get to this point where the depletion width starts, there's no electric field outside that. And then once we get to this, this point, the electric field starts to decrease 
linearly, right? Because we're integrating just a square. So that looks like a triangle. And then at a certain point, uh, when we transition from negative charges to positive charges, the electric field will start to increase. And eventually, once we exit the depletion region, the electric field should be back to zero. And you can do this mathematically with the integral, but I find the graphical representation to be much, uh, much nicer. So if we're using this coordinate system, uh, we, we could assign coordinates. Uh, I'll do that just to, just to be absolutely explicit. So let's say that this is zero and this is xn and this is minus xp. So we have a plot of our electric field. We have what it looks like uh, graphically. And if we want to relate this then to the voltage and then find the re relate the three back to each other, uh, we can use the definition of the electric field, which is that E is just the minus gradient of the voltage or in one dimension, uh, the X dimension, let's say, it's just minus dV times dx. And we can just do the same trick that we did above, uh, rearrange for v. We say dv is just equal to minus e times dx, or the voltage is just, as a function of x, is just the integral uh, of negative e dx, where e is a, here a function of x. So from zero to some x coordinate. And I'm being fast and loose with the integration bounds. Uh, and that's just because the bounds are something that we're going to worry about when we finally perform the integration. Right now, I'm just trying to show the general process. And so if we plot what that looks like, we just graphically integrate it. Let's say we've got V of X on the vertical axis now and X on the horizontal axis. We're up until we get to minus XP, uh, the value of the voltage is zero or the potential is zero, 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 zero. And then we're going to integrate and we'll take its negative. So we're basically going to flip it. Uh, and if we integrate a ramp, if we integrate a function that looks like this, we'll get a parabola. And so as we move from XP, we start to get an upward turning parabola. And at a certain point, once we get to the transition between the two, and this is a, a little too steep of a parabola, once we get to the transition, the zero point, then there's an inflection from a positive going parabola to a negative going parabola because we're integrating uh, a downward sloping X curve. So that should be a downward sloping parabola that we get. And then after this point, the potential, the voltage stays high. And so this uh, is where our band diagram comes from because the energy in our band diagram is just minus Q times the voltage. And this energy should not be confused with the electric field. And, and it's unfortunate that they have the same, the same character to represent them. Our band diagrams, which remember we had drawn, they looked something like this with the conduction band, the valence band, the Fermi level, and the intrinsic Fermi level. And I'll just label this real quick to be explicit. Uh, this was a downward sloping. Uh, it's sort of a downward sloping parabola and then an upward sloping parabola connected together. This is just the negative of this graph. It's just that graph flipped over, reflected across the x-axis. So that's where it comes from. And so in this video, I've kind of outlined the procedure for uh, finding the electric field. And in the next video, we're actually going to evaluate the integrals uh, and then get closed form expressions for the electric field and the depletion width as a function of uh, the built-in potential VBI and the doping concentrations Na and Nd, as well as constants like the permittivity. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.